Hi everyone, my name is Skyla Ramirez. Welcome to our Yoga for Everybody session today. We are going to get started with a little bit of work in the sinuses, working into the meridians that help us to regulate sinus drainage. And um, with the regulation of sinus drainage, we are addressing maybe it's um, congestion or mucus that builds up around the head and the face. Um, excess fluid in the lymph nodes, also addressing bags under the eyes as those are part of the sinuses. And that may not be mucus or a buildup of congestion. It could be um, edema or a buildup of fluids that uh, can happen as a result of stress, stress on the kidneys. So um, no matter where you are today, even if you're not having any congestion or sinus issues, even if you are well rested, don't have any bags under your eyes, this also can be used for preventative maintenance to cleanse out those energetic pathways. It is a type of a kriya. So to get started with this, let's open up our hands and we'll place our pinky fingers from the middle of the chin. We're placing the pinky fingers out just under the lips. And then we take our ring finger and put it up on the crease, our smile crease right here. Curl in the middle finger to press along the top of the cheekbone, avoiding the soft tissues under the eye, pushing onto the cheekbone itself. Taking the index fingers, we're touching just above the eyebrows, and then keep your thumbs free just for a moment. So what we'll do is while we're pressing here, we're, we're only pressing with enough um, sensation as if you were going to um, squeeze a grape. If you were squeezing a grape that is perfectly ripe, you don't want it to bruise and you don't want to break the skin. That's the pressure we're using here, not too, too aggressive or invasive with the touch. So we're going to take a big breath and then we're just humming until we run out of air. That's it. Let's do that one time to exhale all the way first. And now one, two, three, big inhale, roll the breath up into the chest and the heart. And now hum until you run out of breath. Okay, so the second part of this technique is to take your thumbs to the small flap of skin by the ear and you'll push that flap of skin in. So don't do it just yet. So the purpose behind pushing that flap of skin in is to seal in all of the resonance or all of the goodness of that vibration that comes from the humming technique. So let's try that just one more time, sealing the ears, exhale all the way, big inhale, breathe up into the heart and the chest, and now hum. Hmm. As the breath expires, just simply breathing easy in place. Maybe turn your head all the way to the right as far as the head and neck will permit. Hold it there just for a moment. Close the eyes. Listen for the quality of the breath. And now bring the head to center just for a moment. Let's turn our head to the left as far as the neck and the head will permit. Breathing easy. Bring the head to center. Turn the head all the way to the right. Come to center all the way to the left. Center, inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Let's lace the fingers, invert the palms, and push the palms out away from your body. So we're attempting to loosen some of the muscles and release tension in the nerves that run from the neck, the jaw, backs of the ears, underneath the shoulder blades, and into the chest and armpits. When you're ready, relax your hands down. Let's go ahead and lie down on our backs with our knees bent. 
and we'll begin to focus on belly breathing. As we establish some comfort in the low back and hips, let's place our hands on the belly, feeling for the rise and fall of the stomach with every inhale and every exhale, encouraging our breath to move in through the nose, down into the lowest parts of the lungs, and then letting the breath move up through the ribs and all the way up into the center of the chest. As we exhale, purse the lips as if you're going to whistle, and relax your heart, ribs, and belly. Inhaling in through the nose, filling the lungs from the bottom to the top. Exhale as if we're going to whistle and relax the lungs, empty from the top down. Let's try slowing down the exhale, big breath in. Pursing the lips, exhale. At least one or two more of those slow exhales. The longer, the slower the exhale, the higher the chances or the greater the possibility that the body will begin to relax. Long exhales actually regulate what we call the relaxation response in the body. Maybe just one more easy inhale. And long exhale. Let's slowly bring our left knee in towards the chest. Maybe give a little tug onto the leg. Hands are behind the kneecap. Then let that leg go. Lifting the right leg, bringing it in. Hands are behind the thighs or the knees. Just a gentle tug. Letting that go. From here, drawing both knees in. Hands are either to the sides of the thighs or behind the knees. Let's straighten our legs up to the sky and push through the heels, working a nice calf stretch in through the backs of the legs, backs of the knees, and even stretching through our hamstrings. Let's take the feet out wide and then pull the knees in towards the armpits, coming into Happy baby pose, adding in a gentle rock from side to side. So before we stand up, we're just doing a few movements with the feet higher than the heart and chest to encourage any fluids that might be sitting to drain towards the gut. And then hopefully we'll have a little more mobility in the joints with less fluid on the joints. Let's come to center, bringing the knees to about the width of the hips. Let's lower our feet down to the floor, pressing the palms down into the floor beside our hips, pushing into our feet as we inhale, let's lift our hips, finding bridge pose. Exhale, lower the hips and reach the arms overhead, stretching out the armpits, lowering down our palms, Inhale, lifting through the hips, bridge. Exhale, lower arms overhead. Maybe just two or three more like this. Introducing the feet and the bones and the legs to a little bit of pressure, a little bit of weight bearing, and waking up the muscles in the lower extremities. As we wake those muscles up, we are encouraging more blood, more oxygen rich energies to flow into our feet, into our legs, and into our hips. Let's keep the hips down and lower the hands down. From here, let those knees sway left and right, matching the movement with a breath. Exhale, twist, bringing out the lower parts of the lungs, twisting at the waistline as well. Inhaling through center, exhale, gentle twist. Mm -hmm. 
Let's add in our arms as the knees go to the right, bring both arms over to the left. Inhaling through center, moving through the center, the trunk of the body, knees to the left, both arms to the right. Inhale, center, exhale, twist. I like to call this the corkscrew because it does feel like a really a complete spiraling energy through the body. One more time to each side, not only creating a lot of mobility through the entire spine, but also helping to bring out the digestive tract, hopefully giving our body an opportunity to absorb more nutrients, more vitamins. Let's roll over onto one side, holding it there for just a couple breaths. Now, of course, you could always roll over and just pop up into seated, but just pausing for a moment can sometimes really help our blood pressure to stay happy. It can help to reduce any dizziness that we might have if we come up quick. Let's use our top hand on the floor, pushing in the floor, Coming up into a seated position, we may want to put a little bit of cushioning under the hips. We could even sit on a pillow or a yoga block. Allowing the legs to position themselves in any natural way, making sure that we find as much comfort in the hips, belly, and spine as possible. From here, let's place the hands down on our legs coming forward, pull up through the ribs and chest and open the throat, seated cow. On the next exhale, pull the navel back, reach the arms out straight and drop the chin into the chest. It's a little bit like cat pose, seated cow. Inhale, coming forward, lifting through the throat, the head and the neck. Exhale back, chin to chest, stretching open the shoulder blades, feeling as if you're making some space in the mid back. Inhale, coming forward, contracting the back muscles. Imagine you're trying to hold a pencil between the shoulder blades, pulling the ribs up and opening the throat, stretching the lymph nodes around this jaw, throat and chest region. Exhale, pull it back and drop the chin to the chest. Let's come to center. Inhale, reaching both arms up and overhead. We're circle sweeping the arms as we reach towards the sky and maybe even look up. Turning the palms forward, exhale, sweep the arms back, exaggerating that circle movement with the arms. Just a couple more. Inhale, circle back, reach it up, looking up. Exhale, reach it back. Last one, inhaling into the nose, filling belly, ribs, heart. And then exhale back. When you're ready, take your feet to a bent knee position and let's let those knees sway over to one side, coming around into all fours position. From all fours, we're moving into child's pose. And child's pose can be done with the toes touching and the knees really wide. Or we could keep the feet open, the knees and feet at hips width distance. Whenever you find that comfortable foundation with your knees and feet, using our exhale, we'll begin to press the hips back towards the heels. And the hips may or may not touch our feet. Our body gets to choose. Let's reach the arms out in front of the body, extended child's pose. As we inhale here, finding that the breath can move along the sides of the spine and along the sides of the waistline. Letting go of any desire to push the breath into the belly as we are compressing through the gut and the intestines, that little bit of pressure is used to flush out toxins. Let's try a few exhales here. Breathe into the side body. And then big exhale. 
Two more. Last one. When your body is ready, let's shift forward from all fours position, thinking about how we may want to make our way up into standing and moving really slow. We step one foot forward, supporting the body, and then tuck that back toe, stepping your other foot forward, maybe allowing the body to drop for a little while, let those hips sway a little bit. As our blood pressure stabilizes, we walk the hands up and find ourselves in a standing position. Taking our feet out to the width of the hip bones, let's just shift forward and back a few times. Our body appreciates it when we give it time to actually feel the weight bearing, feel for the center of gravity. As we weight bear, the bones are going to have signals out to certain muscles to support us as well. Let's come to a still point. Now roll into the inside and the outsides of the feet. So not only are we working again with center of gravity, but also working with some mobility in that ankle joint and that can affect muscles in the feet. Let's come to a still point, web the toes out like a duck, open through the palms of the hands, circle the arms back, inhale, let's reach to the sky. Exhale, palms forward, circle back. Let's do that just two more times. Circle sweeping the arms with our breath. Inhale, circling up. Exhale, circling back. Inhaling up. Exhaling back. Now just one arm at a time, working with the right arm. Inhale, circle the arm up. Big breath in. And now circle that arm back. Let's repeat that. And as we repeat that, allow the shoulders and the trunk of the body to move with that rotation in the shoulder, keeping the feet grounded. Opening the right palm. Inhale, look over the right shoulder. Allow the hips to twist a little bit, looking back behind us with the right hand, as if we're trying to shake hands with someone behind us. Reaching up overhead, reaching up as if we're holding on to 100 helium balloons. And now reach back and twist, shaking hands again, then lower the palm down. Let's try that one more time. Inhale, sweeping back, shaking hands, reaching up. Exhale, take it back, hand shake, and bring it down. Let's do the left side nice and slow. Inhale, left arm back and around, reaching up. Exhale, back, shake hands and bring it down. Two more like that. Inhale, circle sweep, twisting to the left, twisting with the trunk of the body, return to center. And then exhale back, twist again, returning to center. Last one. Now finding symmetry with the movement again, both palms open, inhale, sweep the hands back, press the chest forward, palms overhead, exhale, arms back and around. Let's add in a forward fold flow. Inhale, sweeping back, exhale, swan diving, bringing the arms out like a T with a flat back, we're pressing our hips behind us, placing the hands down on the thighs, and then relaxing the neck and the head, soften through that upper back, shaking the head yes, and turning the head left and right. Let's bend our knees, feeling that the hips drop back, pressing into our thighs, finding a flat back, protecting our spines, reaching back with the hands into airplane pose. On the next inhale, push into the feet, flip the palms, and reach up overhead. Inhaling, reach again. Exhale, circle the arms back. Let's reach forward with the palms facing up and let the hips go back to chair. Inhaling, circle the arms back and around, reach it up. Exhale, swan dive, hands to the thighs, relax the head and the neck. 
Inhale, coming up halfway. Exhale, flatten the back and bend the knees. Inhale, standing all the way up, reverse swan dive. Exhale, circle the arms, sit back to chair. So this is a very active flow. Coming to mountain, this flow requires one breath, one movement to get the blood pumping. If you notice that um, it feels rushed or it feels maybe uncoordinated, then go ahead and just pause at any time and let yourself take more breaths in each movement. We're gonna try five of these today to really get the blood, the blood pumping. Let's open the palms. Feet are at hip width distance. Inhale, sweeping the arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold, swan dive, hands to the thighs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, flat back, bent knees. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, circle the arms back, palms up, sitting back to chair. Inhale, standing tall, extended mountain. Exhale, forward fold, hands to thighs. Inhaling, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, hold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhaling, chair, circle the arms, palms up. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, swan dive, hands to the thighs. Inhaling, halfway up. Bending the knees deep, flat back, exhale. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhaling, chair pose, palms up, hips back. Two more, inhale, reach it up. Extended mountain, exhale, forward fold, swan diving down. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, bent knees, flat back. Inhaling, rising up. Exhaling to chair. Last one, inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, swan dive. Hands to the thighs, halfway lift, big breath in. Exhale, stay in place. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, sweep the arms back, sitting back, chair pose. Inhale, taking the arms overhead. Exhale, hands to the heart. Let's gather the breath just a couple more times, stabilizing blood pressure. Inhale up and exhale down. One more. Let's meet with our hands at the heart, stepping our left foot back, a casual stride and bending the right knee, reaching both arms straight up overhead into warrior one pose. Lowering the chin, closing the eyes, pressing into the inner blades of the feet, softening any part of their body that might be holding a lot of tension. So, we want a little bit of tension or dynamic energy in the parts of the body that we're strengthening here. But we might notice that there are parts of the body that tense up that aren't really supporting the pose. For instance, it could be the jaw. Relax the jaw. It could be the shoulder, shoulders pressing away from the ears, releasing some tension in the neck. When you're ready, circle the arms behind you, placing the knuckles at the low back. Let's straighten our right leg, inhaling chest expansion, pulling the elbows back and allowing the heart to press forward. On the exhale, relax the ribs a little bit. Two more, big breath into the heart. Exhale, relax. Last one. Let's release our hands. From here, turning our left heel in, we're facing the long edge of our mat. Our right knee is bent while the left leg is straight. We may want to inch that left foot back a little more, creating a longer stride along the long edge of our mat. From here, let's reach the arms out into warrior two pose, looking out over the right fingertips, 
Maybe closing the eyes again as we hold this pose, steady and strong. There's plenty of time to get familiar with how the pose feels rather than wanting to see the pose in a certain way. Let's turn our right palm up, letting the left hand come down to rest on the back thigh or by the hip. Reaching that right arm straight up, keep bending the right knee. Breathe into that upper right rib and shoulder. Two more big breaths here. Exaggerate the reach at the top of the breath. So as the lungs are filled with the breath, we actually are able to lengthen the spine a little more. As we exhale, the muscles will contract and we might feel that we relax the shoulder on the exhale. Just one more, tune into that dynamic stretch, big inhale, and then exhale, relax a little. Let's take our right hand onto our right thigh with the fingertips facing in. We'll take our left hand and bring the knuckles by the low back, straightening the right leg, pressing a lot of energy back into that left hip. Let's roll our left shoulder back, press forward with the right shoulder, maybe even push into the right hand to prop up the waistline and the rib cage. Looking up and over the left shoulder, just for a couple breaths to work on strengthening the head and the neck. Maybe we hold it here a little longer, continue to work with the breath, or add in the left arm, extending that arm straight up to the sky, holding on to our 100 helium balloons. A couple breaths here. Looking up, again, maybe strengthening the neck, turning the hand as if you're unscrewing a light bulb. Let's lower the left hand to the waist or hip, bending the right knee, pushing off that right thigh, both hands to the hips. Let's turn our right toe in. From here, we can safely bring the feet into center. Go ahead and shake off the legs, move the arms around a little bit. All right, let's tap on that sequence from the other side, beginning with warrior one, starting at the top short edge of our mat, feet are at hips width distance. Inhale, sweeping the arms overhead, stepping our right foot back, a casual stride, and bending the left knee this time. Maybe closing the eyes, getting to know the pose based on how our body responds to the position. As we lunge forward, we continue to press back, shoulders stacking over the hips. Again, noticing any parts of the body where we might be harboring excess tension. Breathe from the throat. Relax the jaw. Relax the shoulders away from the ears so that we create more tension in the trunk of the body, less in the neck. When you're ready, we'll circle the arms back, taking the knuckles to the low back, straightening our left leg. Three big expanding breaths. Breathe to the center of the heart. Exhale, soften. Exaggerate the inhale. Exaggerate the exhale. Last one. Let's release our hands, bending that left knee, turning the right heel in, keeping the left knee bent, standing so that we face the long edge of our mat, maybe inching that right foot back just a little more, lengthen out the stride with your body. Let's extend our arms out into warrior two, looking past the, the left fingertips this time. Option to close the eyes, feeling for the breath in the body as we hold our mighty, fierce warrior two pose. Turning our left palm up, reaching down with the right hand to the outside of the right thigh, 
or maybe right hand to the hip. Reaching straight up with the left hand. Keep bending the left knee and inhale into that upper left lung. At the top of the breath, reach a little more out of the armpit. On the exhale, let the shoulder relax. Two more like this, big inhale, bigger exhale. One more. Let's take our left hand onto the left thigh. Fingers are facing in towards that long edge of the mat. From here, keeping a healthy bend in that left knee, we'll take our right hand, knuckles to the low back, drawing that right shoulder back, pressing the left shoulder forward, creating another healthy twist through the waistline. Straightening out that left leg, we might push back into that right hip in our variation of triangle pose. Breathing into that upper right lung, we can keep that left leg straight or we can keep more of a bend in that left knee if it's more comfortable. When your body is ready, we can stay here or maybe experiment by taking that right arm up out or straight up to the sky. Pushing into our left hand so we prop up the left waistline, reaching up with the right arm so that we open through the rib cage. The pose can feel very different from left to right. That is really natural for it to feel different from left to right. One more big breath. Exhale, let's bring that right hand down to the hip or waist. Bending our left knee, we're pushing off the thigh, turning the left toe in, finding our standing straddle, then safely and slowly allowing the feet to inch their way in to the center of our mat. Let's kick off the legs and relax the shoulders, the hands, and the wrists. All right, let's take this into our standing balancing pose for today, moving into an expression of tree pose for our bodies. First, maybe just standing with the hands at the heart, pressing to the center of the chest. Let the body sway left and right a little bit. Closing the eyes, sway to one side, pause, then sway over to the other side and pause. So already the body is beginning to tune into specific energies that are gonna help us keep our center of gravity without having to even lift a foot. We can begin to recruit all of the muscles, all of the energy connections that help us to feel more balanced. Let's take all of our weight into one foot, sliding our other leg in so that the toes touch or the feet touch. Opening our eyes, we may want to look down past our cheeks towards the floor, just beyond the tip of the nose. Staying with the heel lifted on one foot and maybe letting that foot come off the floor. Option two, open that knee out to the side. Our foot may still be on the floor, so we could always pivot the knee out with the heel resting on the inside of our standing leg. Or we can slide our foot up to rest on the inside of the leg. Positioning the foot so that we are avoiding any pressure on the kneecap while we establish and root into a strong tree pose. Option to open the hands as a tree grows and matures, growing mighty branches. Staying for just one or two more easy breaths, no rush. It is important to note that balance can change with seasons, with different times of the day, with allergies, with head colds, relax the hands, step to the floor. Balance can change with different foods. There's a lot of things that affect balance. Let's take our time and shift into the other leg. 
feet are touching, lifting our heel. We might want to pivot that knee to the side, allowing the heel to rest on the inside of our supporting standing leg. Maybe we stay right here. Maybe at this point we experiment with the position of the arms. So some of our bodies balance better with the arms out. Imagine you're holding a stick like a tight rope walker. And sometimes our body feels more balanced with the hands at the waist or even at the heart. None of these variations is considered more or less advanced. It really just all has to do with our own unique nervous systems. So let your body experiment and discover what's working right now, what's working just in this breath. At your leisure, experimenting, possibly with lifting high onto that leg, drawing the sole of the foot somewhere onto the inside of the leg, either above or below the knee joint, taking any pressure off of our precious knees. Remember to smile deep in the breath. <sighs> Reminding ourselves, exhale, more important than the inhale. Exhale big, make space for your next big restorative breath. Big inhale and bigger exhale. <sighs> Let's step both feet down to the floor, shake out the legs, kick off the knees, maybe even roll out the ankles a little bit. From here, let's grab a sip of water before we come down to the floor to work with a few deep hip stretches. To make our way safely down to the floor, Hinging from our hips, we push the hips back, bending the knees, hands to the thighs. So if this is something our body has been practicing already. It's called a forward fold, or it's a swan dive to a supported forward fold. From here, our body may want to gently walk down towards the floor, stepping one foot back, bending both knees to come down into a supported kneeling lunge sweeping our other leg back to find all fours. Then from here, we can sweep our feet to one side and drop the hips to the other to find seated. So moving into our hip stretches today, let's start with one of the most common and uh, one of the most popular hip stretches. So as we begin to move into butterfly pose, it is important to note that when we talk about hip stretches, it could be the inner hip, it could be the outer hip, it could be the front of the hip, or even the back of the hip joint. So as we go into these hip stretches today, we are gonna work on some well-rounded hip stretches. We've already done a lot with the front and the side hip. Now we're gonna get into more of the back and the inner hips. Having our feet touching, we wanna keep our feet at least, I would say at least a good foot length away from the pelvis. This will make sure that your knees are safe. While we're here, we're lengthening through the spine while we allow the chest to fold over, extending the heart out over the knees. Our spines will naturally tell us when they want to relax. So we start with as tall and flat of a back as possible. And as we continue to lengthen forward in the stretch, at some point, our spines will ask us to round and relax a little bit. It is important to allow that rounding to happen naturally. Notice any urge or impulse to force that rounding in the spine. We don't want to force any rounding as this could damage some of the delicate disc and vertebra in your spine column. I'm using a yoga block today. You can use a pillow, a block, or blankets. And I'm putting my prop on the insides of my feet with my hands on the prop. And then I'm just coming forward to rest my head. 
While we're here holding butterfly pose with this inner hip stretch, focus on breathing into your low back, letting the breath build up to the middle back, building the breath up underneath the shoulder blades. Keeping the breath slow and steady, reminding the body that we are in a place, we're in a space where we can take our sweet time. There's absolutely no rush. To safely come out of this pose, let's keep the head down. Start to stack the spine from the low back and hips. Roll the shoulders up and back, lengthening through the middle back, then lifting the chin, the head, and the neck. Let's take any props off to the side. From here, bending our knees, lengthening our right leg straight out on the mat. We're crossing our left leg over the right. Let's take our right hand up, taking in a big breath. And then exhale, twist towards the left, swiveling at the waist. Our right hand could go onto the outside of that left knee as we wrap around the shin or the knee with our arm. That right leg stays active, checking out the right foot. Pull the toes back towards your body and push through the heel. Lengthening through the spine, twisting at the navel first. Then drawing that left shoulder back, press the right shoulder forward and in. Last of all, turning to gaze over the left shoulder. The breath might be a little more shallow here as we are twisting. We're creating a deep contraction in one of the larger parts of the lungs. So the breath might feel just a little bit short or a little shallow. When your body is ready, take your time. Let's unravel the spine. Coming to center, we are opening up that left knee out to the side just for a moment, finding what we call a figure four stretch. So we have the right leg straight to the hip, going out to the left knee, and then crossing over, looking like the number four. From here, sitting nice and tall, we can hold it right here to stretch through the underside of the hip and hamstrings and back. Or if you're wanting to experiment, placing the hands down on that left leg and leaning forward just a little bit. You might feel this in both the left and the right hip. Practice some long exhales, relaxing the jaw. <sighs> Breathing as if you're trying to fog a mirror. <sighs> and moving the jaw around. <sighs> Let's safely come up, stacking the low back through the middle back. Last of all, neck and head. Uncrossing our left leg, straightening that left leg out, shake out the knees. From here, bending our right knee, and then crossing the right over the left, sitting nice and tall. Inhale, left arm up, right hand beside us on the mat. As we exhale, twisting to the right, maybe take the left hand to the right knee or hook that left elbow around your right knee and shin. Sitting tall, twisting from the waist, drawing that right shoulder back, pressing the left shoulder in and forward, turning our head to gaze over the right shoulder, Thinking about the left foot, push through the heel, pull the toes in towards your navel. Staying for about three to five easy breaths. These breaths are light, they're shallow, the rhythm might be short and sweet.
One more easy breath here. And now slowly unravel the spine. Supporting our right leg. We're lifting the right toes, opening that right knee out to the side. I am keeping my right foot flexed. That means I'm pushing with my right heel and pushing with the left heel. Sitting nice and tall in our figure four foundation to stretch the hamstrings, hips and back. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale as if you're fogging a mirror. Move forward with that breath. Inhale, little lift. Exhale, throwing that breath. Just one or two more. Let's use our hands to support the spine as we make our way into seated. Uncrossing the right leg. Shaking out our knees, moving our toes around, keeping both legs extended in front of the body. Let's push through both heels, touch the knees and the feet towards each other. Inhale, reaching the arms overhead into seated staff. This is a pose that can really help to strengthen the core it can also, over time, as those muscles get stronger, it might make us feel taller. We, we might actually measure taller as we lengthen the spine. Exhale, swan dive out, hands to the side. Reach behind you with your hands, fingertips facing to the side or back behind the body. Lean forward with the chest and the heart. Try relaxing the head and the neck. And think about pressing the shoulders away from the ears, maybe even lengthening out the neck. Imagine you're like a turtle coming out of its shell. Pressing the shoulders away, lengthen the spine. One more big breath. Exhale, slide the hands in next to the knees, hands flat to the floor. Let's push up to seated. All right, from here, we're gonna lie down on the floor for a few stretches. You're welcome to grab a pillow or blanket at this time for comfort, allowing our knees to sway to one side. Let's lie down on our sides first, then we'll roll over onto our backs. From our supine position, experimenting with another hip stretch before we go into relaxation. Let's take our right knee in towards the chest, hug that knee in with both hands. Holding it here for just an easy breath or two, relaxing the jaw. To intensify this stretch in the hip, we're rotating that right knee out to the side, and maybe place the right ankle on top of your left leg. This is another figure four stretch. We may want to hold it right here so that we're allowing gravity to assist in opening across the hips and pelvis. Mindfully press down into the left hip, pressing the left hip bone down into the floor while that right knee stretches open to the side. Breathe easy, soften the jaw, close the eyes. Soften through the hips and the pelvis, even relaxing through the buttocks region. We may want to stay here a little longer, or if we're switching sides, let's just move slow, bringing that right knee in, using our hands to guide that knee into neutral, then slowly let the right foot down. 
drawing our left knee straight in towards the chest. Gently opening that knee out to the side towards the left armpit. Then crossing our right ankle over the right thigh, allowing gravity at this point to create perhaps just a little more openness with that left leg. Let's take our hands onto the right hip, press down just a little bit, mindfully shifting energy into the right hip, connecting to the earth with that right hip. Closing the eyes to focus on the breath. Relaxing the jaw, tapping into that intimate connection between the jaw, the throat, to the hips and pelvis. Exhaling from the throat. Just one more. When your body is ready, slowly repositioning that left knee to neutral, using our hands to bring the knee and the leg straight in towards the chest. And finally, let that foot come down to the floor. Let's let those knees sway just a little bit left and right. Allow the body a few minutes to move in any natural way. So maybe your body needs more twisting. Maybe it feels natural to do legs up the wall one more time. You can even stretch out like a stick. Use the next few quiet moments to work out any busy energy in your body and get comfortable for our final meditation and relaxation. Kindly remind your body that it can move whenever it wants to move. You don't have to be still. There can be some value in maybe resisting the impulse to move. Sometimes there are bits of energy that maybe cause us to twitch or ache. In those cases, some of those are really spontaneous physical manifestations. But Sometimes movement is a distraction from the things that might be going on with us emotionally or psychologically. And it is possible to notice the impulse to move, to not act on that impulse and notice what are your thoughts in that still place? What happens when we don't move? What happens when that energy is not expelled or exerted with physical movement, but instead the energy reveals itself through thought or through emotion? Again, notice an impulse to move. What happens if we don't act on it? And then noticing that sometimes there's no time to notice an impulse to move. Sometimes the body will twitch and shake spontaneously. In these cases, don't attempt to suppress that. Let the body discharge those spontaneous energies. In your mind, begin to visualize a pendulum, like on a clock, on a grandfather clock. So you have this energy swaying left and right. Start to pace your breath 
with this pendulum, with this energy, perhaps inhaling as it sways to the left. And then exhale, watch it slowly sway to the right. Watch as this pendulum sways forward and back. Now maybe continue to pace the breath just by watching the sway of this pendulum or begin to count your breath. Inhaling one, two, three. Exhale, three, two, one. Focusing on the breath for about a quiet minute. For those of us that maybe have carved out this one hour today, maybe there are some other things for you to do in your day, please begin to deepen your breath. If you know that your body can rest a little longer, feel free to relax still. As we deepen the breath, noticing any inspiration to move or any impulse to move, what part of the body appears to maybe want to move a little more. If we choose to come up to seated, it is recommended that we bend our knees first and let those knees sway just a little bit left and right. Softening your low back, stimulating the energies in our hips. When you're ready, roll to one side. Open your eyes and slowly make your way to seated. In closing our practice today, let's sweep the arms up, gather the breath, and then exhale, take the arms out to the side. One more, sweeping up. Palms out to the side, clear the energy around you. Let's bring the hands to the heart, traditional closing gesture of gratitude, taking in a deep unifying breath together. And then exhale from the throat. From here, we can bow in peace. Namaste, everyone. Go enjoy the rest of your beautiful day. Until next time.